Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're continuing here at the White House. And you can see the White House there. And I've done a wee video inside the White House. And I mentioned that King William III met General Schomburg here at the ancient quay of the White House. So that ancient quay would have went right down there. And you can see the M5 there. So that M5 actually cuts right across where the ancient quay was. And just beyond the M5 then is the sea. And of course this here is one of the uh, man-made lagoons. Um, the tide is out at the minute, but when the tide is in, that will be covered in water. And this is welcome to Gideon's Green. And there's a big boulder there. Better watch I don't walk into it. So, uh, of course, it's because of uh, Gideon, who actually uh, was called Gideon Bonavert, who was a uh, Huguenot. Huguenot, of course, is a French Protestant. And uh, the Huguenots were persecuted by King Louis XIV, and so they had to flee France. And uh, so it's because of his diary that uh, we actually know about the White House and about William III and General Schomburg, uh, General Schomburg greeting William here, and also William's troops uh, landing here. And so this is called Gideon's Green in honour of that French Huguenot who was William's personal assistant, personal diarist. So he kept a diary, and that's how we know about it. And there's a memorial stone here which is dedicated to uh, this Huguenot soldier, Gideon Bonavert, and it's on uh, a patch of ground in this small park here. And of course, this is known as Gideon's Green. So there's a wee bit, bit of information up here which I'm going to read out to you. And then I'm going to take you and show you the uh, the stone. And you also get tremendous views here because what you're looking at there is uh, Cave Hill. And uh, I think it's that part there that's actually called Napoleon's Nose. Um, why? I don't know. It must look a bit like Napoleon's Nose. But uh, I think it's that part there, that bit that sticks out, that's actually called Napoleon's Nose after the Emperor, but uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But that's Cave Hill. So beautiful scenery here, and of course it's a great day here uh, today. And so I'm gonna read this billboard, I tell you. And then I'll take you over and I'll show you the stone that commemorates um, Gideon and who this green is named after, Gideon's Green. So this is Causeway Coastal Route, Gideon's Green. Gideon's Green offers some great bird watching opportunities over the White House Lagoon. Some of the more notable spaces include, uh, species include Red Shank, Oyster Catcher, Dunlin, Curlew and the Black-tailed Godwit. <coughs> Excuse me, which feed on the mud flats and roost uh, roost on favourite parts of the shoreline during the high tide. And there you can certainly see the mud flaps today. And it's also the National uh, Cycle Way. And here's what it says about White House Lagoon. White House Lagoon is a man-made lagoon which was created following the construction of a causeway in front of White House Strand. The intertidal mudflats that developed now provide important feeding and roosting, roosting habit, habitat for warders and other birds. White House Lagoon is part of the Inner Belfast ASSI, which is the area of special scientific interest, which is particularly important for its overwintering bird populations. And then it says a lagoon which is adjacent to Gideon's Greens Park is a great place to visit both this, for both the serious and amateur bird watcher alike. Gideon's Green and White House Lagoon are managed by Newton Abbey Borough Council. And uh, there you can see some of the wildlife, some of the birds. There's a cyclist and there that's General Schomburg. And there you can see General Schomburg greeting King William, which of course would have been just down beyond the motorway there 
That's a great wee picture, isn't it? And this is the White Abbey, about 1910, and it says the White House, and it's around 1910. But I'm going to read a wee bit of information, which says, Did you know the name Newton Abbey is derived from the ancient monastery, the White Abbey, built around 1250? And so you've got the White House there, and I would assume that that is the White Abbey, which it is. That's the ruins of the White Abbey, and that's the White House, the White House we were in, of course. And it says, the name Newton Abbey is derived from the ancient monastery, the White Abbey, built around 1250. This abbey was a, a daughter house of Dryburg Abbey in Scotland, and records, records show that it was one of the richest abbeys in Ireland at that time. The White Abbey was originally named Drum Le Crux, as it was believed to possess a relic of the True Cross. The walls of the abbey's chapter house remained until 1925, but have since disappeared. So that's unfortunate. And uh, then records show that the White House dates back to the 16th century. General Schomburg is thought to have welcomed King William III to this fortified dwelling in June 1690, before the Williamite Wars in Ireland. The building is now owned by the White House Preservation Trust. The monument placed in the centre of the green commemorates Gideon Bonavart. Bonavart was a Huguenot soldier whose diary recorded the landing near the site of the European army that accompanied William, that accompanied William III to Ireland in 16. 90. And as I say, that's William uh, Schumburg greeting William. That's William himself. And somebody seemed to have scored that out, so they mustn't like William. <laughs> and uh, that's the White House where he entertained William. And then that's the old Abbey, which is fantastic, the White Abbey. And unfortunately, none of the uh, remains are left. So I'm going to take you a wee walk across here and uh, we're going to have a wee look at the stone. Now, this is not, the green itself isn't very big, um, so you can do a short walk around here, but you can also uh, head, you can walk around the hazel bank from here, which is a wee bit longer. Um, so that's a nice walk as well by the sea. And as you can see, a lot of people walk their dogs here. But it's also used as a cycle route, as the, the board says. And so don't forget to uh, check out the wee uh, video that I'd done earlier inside the uh, White House. Um, because there's loads of history there where uh, General Schumburg entertained uh, King William III. So make sure that you... Uh, check out that wee video but where we're actually heading now is to that stone there that you can see in front of us that boulder and so we're gonna have a wee look at that and of course the Williamite soldiers would eventually make their way to the Boyne River and of course they would cross the Boyne River at Old Bridge and there was fierce fighting from it was from about four o'clock in the morning with the Duke of Schomburg's uh, flank and march that's Junior Schomburg Junior towards Slane towards Rosnery and of course the fighting lasted um, till about 10 o'clock that night. So it was quite a long day for both the Williamites and the Jacobites. So there you can see the better picture of the M1 there, or sorry, the M5. And so that actually cuts right across the old ancient quay. The old ancient quay there would have been down the other side of that motorway. And of course, when they built that, I think it was the 1970s, then they destroyed the, the old ancient quay, unfortunately. And you can see a bit of more, a wee bit more digging going on. Down the bottom there. 
So this is the stone. And this stone, of course, is in memory of the Huguenot Darius, D Darius who, D Darius who uh, uh, actually was William's Darius. And as you can see, it says Gideon's Green. And it's the European army which accompanied William of Orange to Ireland in 1690. Landed near this site and eyewitness accounts of the landing are contained in a diary presently in the British Museum in London. And then it says to honour the work undertaken by the author of the diary, a Huguenot soldier named Gideon Bonavert, the Newton Abbey Borough Council decided in, 18, in 1989 that this uh, parkland area be named Gideon's Green. So that's fantastic, isn't it? Now you can see the man-made lagoon in the distance. And so this tranquil park is actually right beside the busy M5 from Belfast to Carrickfergus. So incredible. So thank you for watching and God bless.